Good evening and welcome to SAT TV's Channel 9 Evening News. I am your presenter, Nisha Charles. Thank you for joining us. Among the major developments, the Prime Minister and Leader of the Opposition cannot agree on a joint nominee for the Presidency. Suriname signs global pacts to improve container inspection. Norway Court finds Andres Berry Brevik sane. And in sports, Bolt and Blake both set new records at the Lausanne Grand Prix. Details of these and other stories after the break. Thank you for staying with us. Now for the details of the news. A number of young persons from various districts, island-wide, all converged at the Arawak House of Culture for the Volunteers Appreciation Day 2012. The event, which was held on Friday, August 24th, saw the attendance of young persons from districts such as the Roseau South, Northeast, Western and Eastern. Chief Youth Development Officer Mr. Jules Pascal says he is pleased with this summer program which engaged the youth as one of the principles of the corporate division is people coming to work together. So it is important for us to recognize that as young people it is necessary for us to be able to have those kind of relationships to work together with others for the good of all. So today I want to share a few things with you as I think it is necessary for you as young people, as volunteers, to see yourselves as people who have and will continue to make a difference in the development of this country. It is important to take time to give recognition to the positive efforts and support that young people have been given to not only the youth division, but to their communities and for us as we are concerned about development we want to recognize our young people because their contributions help to make the country what it is he added that volunteerism aids in the building of the core of young people which brings about youth participation which in turn motivates others to do likewise through volunteerism you are building a resource. You are building your communities. You are building your country. Your country, sorry. And you are helping to find solutions for the issues and the challenges that not only you face, but the rest of the country faces. He said they have been working hard for over 30 years to create a more enabling environment for young people and the summer program was a good way in doing so to help the youth make meaningful contributions to the country's development. We want to encourage organizations, we want to encourage institutions around Dominica to take a leap out of this program and create the enabling environment for our young people to be able to participate meaningfully in their community development, in their country's development. Because volunteerism strengthens public and private sector partnership. This program also provides the young people with knowledge and skills which will benefit them for their future in their development. He also advised the young persons to continue being volunteers and their work will not go unnoticed as his job today was a direct result of being a volunteer which he was very thankful for. So I want to encourage you Volunteerism is a very good thing. Keep it up. Continue working hard because it pays. Last of all, in closing, I want to say to you that it is really a wonderful moment for me. This year is my last year as speaking to volunteers in such a forum because I will soon be leaving the Youth Development Division. Publicly, I'm saying to you, that it has been a wonderful experience for me as a youth officer, as a worker in the youth department, in the youth development process, and interacting with you young people has really helped me to stay young. Ms. Melissa David, who read a speech on behalf of the Commissioner of the Cooperatives, Ms. Marius Canaval, says as the United Nations chose the theme, Cooperatives Build a Better World, to celebrate the year of the Cooperatives 2012, it was only right that they did some work with the youth to engage them in building a better future. She thanked the youth division for working with the cooperative division for this program and is of the hope that some of the youth will one day be coordinators. Ms. Dow Powell, the manager of the National Cooperative Credit Union, says his volunteerism as a young man helped shape him into the man he is today, 
so all volunteers must take their roles seriously. Whatever you gain or lost during the past week of your involvement in this important program will affect your life. I know that you have gained quite a bit. The value of your giving will be known in the production of your life in the near future and not merely in what you achieved over the past few weeks of volunteering. Mr. Paul advised the students to continue to be positive volunteers as it will nurture them to be positive role models for younger persons to look up to. He went on to advise the students to save all their time, no matter how small it is, which later on in the future will greatly benefit them. Planning early for a career can help you, can help your education process. So know what you would like to be in the future. Ask questions, research, plan. With the advent of the internet age, we don't have to go much, much, um, we don't have to go to the library. We have our library in our hands, both of us who have cell phones, although the library is a good place to be. But you have the, you have the internet, you are of the internet age, and so make use of the resources available to you. As I said, ask questions, research, plan, stay focused on your goal. At the Appreciation Day, the students got the chance to showcase their talent as they did a number of performances in the form of song and dance. The event was done in collaboration with the Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sports, the Youth Development Division, along with the Corporatives Division. The 10th OECS Credit Union Summit commenced on August 24th at the St. James Academic Center in Portsmouth. This year, as they celebrate the International Year of Cooperatives, the summit is deemed Cooperatives, the engine of growth in tough economic times. Alec Haynes, Secretary of the Caribbean Federation of Credit Unions, the CCU, says history has shown that in biblical times, cooperatives continue to grow and be successful. Despite the global economic challenges confront the whole of the world, cooperatives, especially credit unions, play an even more important role in the development of people. And why, why is that? Because credit unions and cooperatives people He says all over the Caribbean, credit unions are forming strategic linkages with the non-financial cooperatives. I think this is important because if we're going to build a society, it's important that the non-financial cooperatives, or we call the productive cooperatives, take their rightful place within the development of the region. Um, as we approach the ending of the international year of cooperatives, you will find that more non-financial cooperatives are coming to the fore for the bill to build their capacity. He hopes that at the end of the day, cooperatives can build a better world. Honorable Justice L. Simmons, QC Attorney General in Antigua and Barbuda, is presenting on the Harmonized OECS Cooperatives Act. He says this is due to the financial turmoil in the world, and in particular Antigua and Barbuda with the Sanford tobacco, and serious concerns of financial irregularities and money laundering. The authorities have determined that credit unions or cooperatives generally would be also under threat um, because they too deal in financial transactions. and. Uh, in light of the fact that they're addressing the issues in respect of the commercial banks, it has been felt necessary that the cooperatives should also be part and parcel of this prudential um, change and regulation. He believes the credit union movement is under threat from money laundering. But we cannot wait until something happens before we take the necessary steps to address those issues. Um, to be forewarned is to be forearmed. We recognize that the banks are under threat and in light of the fact that the credit unions particularly are financial institutions that we need to do some forward thinking and address that issue with the credit unions. The one thing that has to be borne in mind and I think this is where the credit union league um, have been agitating is that you cannot treat credit unions like you treat banks. He says the banks are private profit-making entities and credit unions are for non-profit. And for that reason, the prudential rules and regulations which have been put in place to govern banks 
ought not to be um, of the same rigorous um, quality in respect of credit unions, given that basic difference. The summit will go on for the next couple of days, discussing issues including the co cooperative's principles and the roles of the producers' cooperative in the economic development of the OECS. Parliamentary representative for the Roseau Central constituency, Honorable Norris Prevo, is of the firm view that the government of Dominica is not adequately handling the issue of the upsurge of crime and violence, which if not dealt with properly can get out of hand. First of all, we have had a Minister of National Security who has been incapacitated for a very, very long time. And the government has done, the Prime Minister has done a disservice to Dominica in not appointing a full new Minister of National Security and allowing the ministry to drift. Mr. Prevo said, adding insult to injury, the government has given the wrong signal to the police, Dominicans who obey and those who do not obey the law, in terms of the government's commitment to law and order and the constitution of Dominica. I mean, that unfortunate statement made by the Prime Minister that no law, no constitution can prevent him sending the signal that he and certain of his ministers are above the law. That has sent a wrong message to the police force. And I sympathize with them because when you are out there putting your life on the line to defend our people and to uphold the law, and you hear your prime minister and ministers of government, you know, making statements that suggest to Dominicans that if you are close enough to the party, you don't have to uphold the law. That is not good for law and order in Dominica. However, he commends the police department for their recent successes in the war against drugs in Dominica, in addition to other criminal matters of concern, while adding there is a lot more that can and should be done. Mr. Prevo pointed out what he would like to see is the government of Dominica allowing the police department the freedom to carry out their duties in accordance to the laws and constitution to uphold the law and not interfere in criminal matters of interest to them which is obstructing the wheels of justice. Our government, United Workers Party, when we were in office, we allowed the security forces to do their duty and we maintain that policy that the police have a responsibility to the constitution and to the people and um, they should be allowed to carry out their duty and given the necessary support that they need to carry out their duties. Mr. Prevo says when the government interferes with the operations of the police force, to their favor, which is obvious, it sends the wrong message to the public and it needs to stop. He said such injustice by the government was displayed when several of the members of the United Workers Party were charged for a protest they had in front of the parliament protesting that the 2009 general elections were rigged and were calling for a free and fair election. We were there protesting. Within our rights, legally, the police were aware of it. They were there. The protest ended. We heard nothing about any charges or anything. Then several months later, several months later, the police then decided that they were going to charge members of United Workers Party for this protest, which they called a procession, which it was not. And it is obvious that the police did not see any violation of the law and must have been influenced by the political forces to have come with a charge three months later. You know, I mean, the director of public prosecution rightfully decided that this judge was null and void and took the decision under the law not to go forward with it. He said this was a clear politically motivated directive to the police force to intimidate their supporters. Mr. Prevo said that the decision that the director of public prosecutions took to drop the charges was a clear affirmation to Dominicans that they should fear no more. The House of Assembly has called a meeting to state that the Prime Minister, Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, and the Leader of the Opposition, Honorable Hector John, cannot come to an agreement for a nominee for the position of presidency. The Speaker of the House, Ms. Alex Boyd Knight, says that if the Leader of the Opposition and the Prime Minister cannot agree on a joint nominee for the position, the Prime Minister shall notify the Speaker and the Speaker shall notify the House accordingly. The Prime Minister or the Leader of the Opposition or any three members of the House may during the period expiring 14 days after the day on which the House has been so informed 
submit to the speaker by writing under their hands nominations of candidates for election as president and the speaker shall at the first meeting of the house after the expiration of that period and i'm adding my own between brackets here that is the 14 days and before the house proceeds to any other business inform the house of the nominations he has received and to which the candidates concerned have consented she says that 14 days from today august 24th she will close the period for which she accepts nominees for candidates for the presidency the 7th of September is the cutoff date for which nominees can be received. The Prime Minister can nominate, the Leader of the Opposition can nominate, and three members together can also nominate. So such nominations shall be sent during the next 14 days to the Clerk of the House, and there, as soon as these nominations are all in, they will be placed before you at the next sitting of the House after those 14 days. Opposition leader Edison James says there must be a vacancy before they can go ahead and present nominations, but from his understanding, there has been no formal resignation from the President. I have not heard you indicate that such letter of resignation has been received by you, which as I understand it, we understand it, is what would create the vacancy. So how then do we proceed on the 191 if there is not a vacancy? Because the thing is, we could go ahead with all this, Madam Speaker, and then there is no vacancy. What I've noticed in the section 19 and even 119 is that all these actions which are required to be taken by the different functionaries must be done in writing. The Prime Minister, Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, indicated that the President had said that due to ill health, he will not be able to continue his residency. The Prime Minister says that if the President resigns now, it means that the country will be left without a President. The President cannot resign at a future date. The moment the Speaker receives the letter from His Excellency the President, even if the letter were to say, I shall resign on September 25th, it is at the date the, the speaker received the letter the president would resign. Now, um, if we go along and allow the president to write today, it would mean, therefore, that they, we would have no president in place for a period of two weeks. Members of the House on the opposition have indicated that they have not seen this formal letter of resignation and requested that they receive a copy of the letter to move on with the nominations. The Prime Minister has stated that if the Leader of the Opposition wants to engage him, he is free to do so, but he will not make photocopies available to all those involved. Dominica continues to entertain the public as well as display their talents by hosting an authentic dance competition called Dominica Can Dance, carded for Saturday the 25th at the Arawak House of Culture. Promotions and marketing assistant manager Ms. Odessa Denard said the idea was originated from Mr. Anselm Prince and this competition accepts all persons living in Dominica regardless of their nationality. Okay, well for the competition we are having a panel of judges. So for these judges we had um, we say workshops in which we trained them to ensure that they did their best in judging the um, performers. Also we are having it at the Arrow Walker. So we had to get you know, a location that was suitable for persons, so where persons could feel comfortable in coming to the competition. And it's sponsored by Lime. So at the competition, people will be doing texting. Entries are currently closed at the moment. However, another competition will be held next year because this will be an annual thing. Therefore, those who think that they lost an opportunity to showcase their talents will have another chance next year. Well, so far, I think we have 20 participants uh, they are partaking in four different categories. So we have either Latin category, we have hip hop category, we have the cultural category, and we have the creative category. From teenagers to forties, yes. And we also have, um, I should say, Haiti, um, Haitians participating because the competition is open to. All persons of Dominica, once you are living in Dominica, you can participate in the competition. She added that preparations have been going on since July, and she believes it will be a money well-spent show. 
Director Marketing Assistant also mentioned the last show for this competition will take place at some point in December. I will tell the public to attend the show because it's uh, um, showcasing Dominica's talent. So we see a lot of competition where it's only singing, but we don't see a lot of dance competition. And our youths out there, they love to dance, so that'll be a way of showcasing their talent. So. No, the entry has closed, but of course we're planning to have it next year, so maybe next year they can partake in the competition. Ms. Inard believes Dominican's talents will be displayed in the field of dance. Activities to observe Public Service Day 2012 continue with the hosting of outdoor games, which include a basketball tournament, carded for Saturday the 25th, at the Lindo Park Sports Complex and a sports festival and family fun day at the Windsor Park Sports Stadium planned for Sunday the 26th. These events will take the form of a competition among the various government departments or ministries in rounders, cricket, basketball and football. The main objective of the activities is to advocate collaboration, togetherness, greater interaction and socialization among public officers. Sports officer Mr. Yudi John says the games have been organized in such a way for it to be both fun and competitive. So during the games, during the intermission periods, we will be having a free point competition and a free throw competition where we'll engage the members of the public, the supporters of the games, um, members of the families of the participants from the public service and so forth. So there will be this fun aspect of the games on Saturday, but then more so there will be competition among the various departments in the, in, the, um, in the government service. So we're expecting to make a start at 6.30 on Saturday evening. In an effort to generate interest and excitement for the sports festival and family fun day, an aerobic display will be done by the public service exercise group. The general viewing public will also be invited to participate in the aerobic display. When asked where did this idea come from, Mr. John mentioned that the Public Service Committee wanted to do something different. There's a Public Service Celebrations Committee. So there's a big committee. They have a number of different aspects of the public service celebrations, but the sports aspect is just one aspect. And this is chaired by Ms. Josephine Corbett. And um, there's, a, there's a committee put in place for, for about um, five, six, five, six members in that committee. And um, what was initially done, we sent out to the, to the public service, various departments and ministries, asking them to get a feedback as to what they would like to see for the, the game celebration. And, um, and as a result, what we are putting in place based on the teams who have registered. Um, but on Sunday, what we'll be having is a family fun day where we'll have festivals in, in rounders, cricket, and football. He said the competition will start with cricket, followed by rounders, and then football in terms of festivals. But during that day, we plan to have it as a family fun day, and therefore we'll, we'll have ad hoc sport as well. We'll be having some volleyball where you could just come and play volleyball on the savannah while the competition is going on. We have put factored in place some free-legged race, lime and spoon, and sack race to engage the, the children, again, and families who are not part of the competitive aspect of the day, but will be part of the fun day. So we will be having that and we'll be providing, we'll try our best to see if we get a bouncing castle. So our young children from the parents of this public service, public servants, sorry, will be able to engage themselves in physical activity while the activities are going on. Because we do not, we do not just want it to be the competitors in competition. But as it, as it is implied by the name Family Fund Day, we have to provide those activities for them. Public officers are urged to attend in large numbers to support the competing teams at the outdoor games. An enjoyable atmosphere will be created with the presence of live music entertainment and the sale of eats and drinks. Um, it's, it's an opportunity for, for socialization and um, re-energizing of the members of the public servants as part of the celebration and so there will be no fees attached to getting to the games. Registration is your member of the department and you represent in your department and then you come out and play. But um, there are some persons who, uh, who have not registered because the department did not register a team to participate in the competition. We have made allowances for that and so in every sporting discipline that we'll be having, there'll be a team that we call the rest of the public service. This has been the local segment of the news. Coming up next, regional highlights.